Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you yes. Garage Logic Podcast number 1023. Not that long ago. It was 63 degrees on this day. That was in 2017. Ooh. And it was 20 below on two occasions, 1903 and 1936. Yes. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. In relation to the Minnesota power equipment ban that's been proposed, uh, Roger, a loyal GL lawyer, writes, Hail the flashlight king. Hail you! As history tends to repeat itself, I fear the Minnesota prohibition on gas-powered garden equipment will take us back to the 1920s and the rise of the mafia and black market wars right here in GL. If you can't buy a new lawnmower, your only choice will be to fix the old one. Of course, there will be Don's. Don Joe, head of the Irish family. They call him the mayor as he is the head of the five families and the keeper of common sense. Don Fratelloni, head of the Fratelloni family with control of the spare parts market. Don, Mr. Unbelievable, with control of the repair market. Don Crescent, dean of the home of the fighting wrenches in control of the next generation of small engine mechanics. And Don Two-Cycle, head of the canine family, oh, the yeah. enforcers of GL order. They will all meet in a back room of the NAC Hardware and Lounge to discuss how to work together and get rich. Save the consigliere <coughs> position for me, please. Roger, a loyal GL lawyer. <laughs> I got a meeting here today. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you, you come doing? to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Bonacero, Bonacero. The woke word has... It's taken been, off, Joe. It's <laughs> spirited the GLers. All of us know or knew that that was the wrong word. And many, many people, I think it has to come down to a vote. We'll conclude, we'll conclude submissions today. Uh, enough's enough. We've got enough good ones. Uh, I submit the delusionists. Write these down, Rook. Here, the voting will be among the following. Oh, should we do a poll question? And I, yes. And I, maybe you should do it on the website. All right. Uh, Bert submitted the delusionists. All right, I... And I'm the mayor of this. Of, I'm the Don, so yes. I'm going to decide which will be voted on. We're not going. We're not going to be like the Minneapolis City Council and vote to vote who gets to vote on it. I'm going to determine what what the finalists are. All right, here we go. With your uh, with staff member opposition, of course. If you just delusionists. D e l u s i o n i t s. Delusion with an is. Yeah. Okay. Regressives. That's from uh, Benjamin. So we got delusionists and regressives. You got two so far, Joe. They, I can pick a bone with delusionists, uh, but that's up to the voters. Uh, the regressives. Regressives. That's we got delusionists from, and the regressives. You already did that one. Yeah. We're good. Did I say regressives? Sure yeah. Did. That was the second one on the list. Well, then two people had regressives. Okay. Benjamin and Downing had regressives. Uh, I want to read Downing's note. Re we have Dan Pilla, the tax man, on today. Correct. That's a little later Next in the show. Segment. Regressive, this is Downing. Regressives is a term I've used myself for years. It applies to the way they want us to revert to a way of life without modern conveniences or, more importantly, modern choices and freedoms. 
However, there is nothing regressive about many of their notions, such as those surrounding gender. Our grandparents may have walked more, made their own bread, and kept chickens, but they did not believe that men could get pregnant. This is a fundamentalist belief system that defies science, relies on faith, and cannot be reasoned with. In that way, they are left-wing fundamentalists. So scrap, no, uh, uh, add fundamentalists. Fundamentalists. I guess you, yeah. Uh, Now, do we want to call them left-wing fundamentalists? Yeah, it's It's not disrespectful enough for my taste. So you need left-wing. Yeah, I need something mean in there. So uh, review, Rook, we have three, and they are? Delusionists, the regressives, and the left-wing fundamentalists. Uh, and you might want to have the uh, LDF, the drum roll ready it's like the for this Latter Day Saints. Uh, Michael McDonald writes, "Hail the flashlight king!" Okay. Hail you! I was sitting at the neighborhood dog. <laughs> Sorry, I was sitting at the neighborhood dog park with our newly rescued beagle and enjoying the eighty degree weather. I don't know where he's emailing from. Obviously not here. And began listening to the podcast from Feb fifteen. The subject of a more appropriate term for woke arose. Well, I don't have time for the fog. I got her. A few years back, while studying some of my Scottish lineage, I ran across a term that has been used for years in Scotland. I think it is their term for woke from years gone by. I had always learned that I was of Scottish heritage, but the Americans had already arrived in Amer- who had already arrived in America did not despise the Irish as much as they did the Scots. My ancestors, in their infinite wisdom, decided to remove the A in Mac to possibly be accepted more easily when they arrived here. Apparently, it did not work out real well, and they still ended up in Duluth. Anyway, the old Scottish term for what I think they used for woke is a cockwomble. The Urban Dictionary describes a cockwomble as a person, usually male, prone to making outrageously stupid statements and or inappropriate behavior while generally having a very high opinion of their own wisdom and importance. Wow. And there are symptoms, uh, there are synonyms, but I, I can't read them. Uh, today with the LGBTQRUVWSTUV proclaiming their own self-importance, I personally have met numerous cockwombles of many genders. Mm. Hope you take this term into consideration and give my Scottish ancestors a little pat on the back. Well, I, I would vote on cockwomble. That's my favorite so far. Put that cockwomble down. That does Rook. not surprise me, Kenny. No, no, the description is just right on. I, Except they're usually male, and as we know, many wokesters are female. Is that with a C or a K? C. Is there also a dash? Is it all one word or is it one word? Okay. C W a C W. Yep. Womble, W-O-M-B-L-E, cockwombles. Mm-hmm. So read me what we have so far. Uh, delusionists, the regressives, the left-wing fundamentalists, and the cockwomble. P.S. Whoa. <laughs> P.S. Still feel yep. weird seeing that. For Rook, <clears throat> I've also learned why Scotsmen wear kilts. Why do Scotsmen wear kilts? Because sheep can hear a zipper from a mile away. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Before I fell in love with cockwomble, oh I was I was going to suggest pillock, which is a kind of a British slang, which I just love. It all it means is stupid. You're a dum dum. Yeah, but aren't we in America? Right. Well, the Scottish term. Uh, boy, I really love that Scottish term. That's really good. I, I wish it didn't have the. Well, uh, there's, there's different we're not words. Done. The, 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 <laughs> different the words. GLers have put on their thinking caps. This is from Bill. The Harley golf cart guy that harkens back to the Dark Sox golf tournament. Listen, you cockwomble. See, that just works. Listen, you pillock. That's also hurtful. Well, your attention. I got, like that. If you'd be patient. Go ahead. Go ahead. Gas holes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is that with a dash? One word. One word. Gas hole. <laughs> or... Assations, A S S A T I A N S, plural for asshat. The Assations. Oh, man, these are good. Or, and this is really good, the Marx Brothers. M A R X. Because they're Marxists. The eh, Marx Brothers. Eh. All right, but you don't have to vote on that one. But of this list, I want voted on gas holes. 
and the stations. Right, let me see if I can do a poll question right now on our social media. Well, I'm sure that'll be screwed up. All right, choice one. I'm going to put this up on the Garage Logic Twitter account, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Steve Wilson up Aiken Way, he's got a beauty. What's he got? Dark bots. Um, they act like robots carrying out dark missions that have been programmed into their circuitry in the failed academy. I don't like any, you use the term dark for something else, too. It, yeah. just, it doesn't set right with me. Dark for people, some, I call them. Yeah, that it has nothing to do with skin color. I, I know, but it just doesn't work for me. It's just people are too dumb to realize that. Uh, I want it on the on the. Uh, and old, same with the people who don't like uh, street lights. What, what do you call them? Dark people. Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. All right. Yeah. Uh, Is it W O M B L E or W A M B L E? Uh, I had W O M B L E. Okay. Womble. Womble. Yeah. All right. Now I have a question because on the Twitter <laughs> poll, you're only allowed to do four different options. Then don't do them yet. Of these, of the list we're defining, I'll come up with the four. Okay. Uh, Johnny Fargo writes, as to Garage Logic Nation's collective effort to come up with language to replace woke, to describe the overly pious, evil, fear mongering, demagoguing, self righteous, intolerant, addle brain, climate hoax, Kool Aid drinking, history erasing, statue hating, academically bankrupt, children indoctrinating, language hijacking, jab and mask mandate fascists, and individual and freedom despising Marxist purveyors of soft racism, I think we're being way too nice. Think about what they think of us, what they call us. This is a fight. And while I am okay with woke, as long as we understand the irony of what it actually means and apply the mockery it deserves, as an alternative, I do find woke to be overused and tiresome four-letter word. I am going with turd people. <laughs> or just turds. Turds. Okay, we'll shorten it to turds. Turds. Or turds. Turds. <clears throat> <laughs> Well, do you want to decide now? Because then we can go back to this throughout the show. Let's. Uh, the we poll. need to have an off-air production meeting on the air right now. Okay. okay. Joe, are you? So we're off the air. Nobody can hear us. Are right, you? Right, um, hear us are you willing and ready to answer all the emails that we're, we're going to get regarding the term cockwomble? Because we're going to get a lot of them, and we're going to have to background the audience every single time oh, we well, say it. I, I have and not, it's it's going to become a burden for us right. for the on-air product. Right. And I've, I have not proclaimed Cockwomble as a finalist. I, know, I do but it's appreciate so good. its effort. I, I think it's really it's, good. It's, it's so it's, good. I love the the last three or three of the last four. I don't like Marx Brothers, but I like the other three that you gave. And then I Gas also, Holes and Assations? Oh, those are my two favorite. I'm afraid uh, to say cockwomble. Well, here's now Rachel writes with <laughs> some late. sensitivity. Rachel writes with some sensitivity. <laughs> okay. I we feel don't... you are too harsh in your analysis of oh. woke people. Maybe because somehow I raised a child who is now a woke adult. Oh, no. The leaders who are coming up with this nonsense, knowing it is all nonsense, are indeed mean, nasty people. But your average woke follower is another matter. They are instead sleepwalkers. They oh. appear awake but are unaware of the truth that they are indeed asleep. In their dream world, they are saving the planet, truly good and kind, and helping society move to a better place. Sadly, when they do truly wake up, they will be destroyed to learn how deluded they were. Holding my breath and hoping for the best, Rachel. Hmm. Didn't you have a zombie one? Yeah, I had zombie, but... No, sleep, there was uh, th something... Zombified. That's what it was. Zombified. Sleepwalkers. Add that to the list. Sleepwalkers. Sleepwalkers. Okay, so Almost right, done. right now on the four, I have gas holes, assations, cockwomble, and left wing fundamentalists. Those okay, are the four. We're taking out cockwomble oh. because I don't want to take the time to explain it. Got it. Uh, plus, it if we need something that instantly does not require explanation, explanation. it needs to it needs to be as commonly understood as woke regressives. I want that added to the list right. instead of cockwomble. I got it. Crossed off. Which I love the name. <clears throat> it is great. I, I, yeah, I like regressives. I do too. Yeah. Is that our four? Pharisees. Mm. With a P? 
The Pharisees paid a great deal of attention to outward ordinances and actions that would make them appear righteous, but they were not as concerned with actually being righteous in their Ooh, hearts. Wow, that is 100%. That's the same definition as cockwomble, and it's not as bad. I know. Well, that's not bad. I, I like that you one. You know what? That's probably the most accurate. Jesus had a lot of not-so-nice things to say about the Pharisees mm -hmm. in Matthew 23. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for citing Matthew in the gospel. Good luck and get them where it hurts. Mark in Rochester, Minnesota. Boy, Pharisees is really... You know why Pharisees might work? Because it plays into the fact that this wokeism is of a religious oh, yeah. nature. I think we found it. I think we found it. I think we're and we hit just, it. That completely descri the, the what did the Pharisees do? You just said it. They were a bunch of BSers. Right. They yeah. didn't want to practice it. No. But they want to go ahead. Dumb so, AF. But they thought they were brilliant. Do you want that to replace left wing fundamentalists? Yes. All right. Yeah. Sp spell it for me, please. Pharisees. P H A R I S. Yep. E E S. Oh, really? E E S? Fair. Yeah. That's how I spell it. Well, that's how the emailer spelled it. I'm trusting him. All right. What's, what's his name? We need Mark to give him. Mark in Rochester, Minnesota. Good job, Mark. Good job to all. Good job yeah. to everyone. I love that people are thinking about it. It is P H A R I S E E. -E. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Pharisee. No, I just wanted to. So, what are right. your finalists on the poll? On the poll question about to be tweeted out from the Garage Logic Twitter account, I said we are attempting to replace the word woke on the show. Have at it and place your vote. Choice one, gas holes. Mm -hmm. Choice two, assations. Mm -hmm. Choice three, regressives. And choice four, Pharisees. Okay, now let's revisit because. Gas hole and assation, as much as we love them, need explanation. I just like saying gas I know. Hole. What were the last two? <laughs> uh, Pharisees and regressives. They don't need explanation. I think those are going to be the two yeah. most popular. Yeah. Here's the, here's yeah. the literal uh, uh, description. A member of an ancient Jewish sect distinguished by strict observance of the traditional and written law and commonly held to have pretensions to superior sanctity. Wait a minute. So they were Jews? Yep. Oh, damn it. That's all right. No, it's not going to be all right in the long run. We're going to get called on the carpet for okay. that. Well, okay. Damn it. Uh, take out Pharisee. Uh, it's so, uh, it's oh, so it awesome really, being... You know what? It really works. Uh, you know what? Being ignorant is just so awesome. You find out the truth and it's just, oh, damn. I don't <laughs> think the Jewish people in our audience Doesn't would mind them. if we use Pharisee. What are you talking about it, them? It, it, the problem is you're going to put this on social media and people that are not in our audience that don't listen on a daily basis are going to see this and then they're going to freak out. By it might means. be the publicity we need. By right. all means. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, Ruck. Uh, are you comfortable? Yeah, Ruck. Make a good living. Give me the list again, the long <laughs> list. Delusionists. Uh, all right. Yep. Regressions. Regressives. We got Regressives, that. I'm sorry. We got that, yep. right? Yep. yep. Uh, we took off uh, left-wing fundamentalists. Right. We took off cockwomble. Yep. Uh, gas holes. We took it off. Got it. We love it, but we're taking it off. Uh, uh, Assations. We love it, but we're taking uh, it off. <laughs> Marx Brothers. We love it, but we're taking wait, it off. Wait. Turds. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Put that in a special spot. Uh, Joe, how about S heads? <laughs> <laughs> now, give me what you Sleepwalkers, have. is that off? Sleepwalkers might be at it. Mm. That's boring. Uh, yeah. It, All right, give me your list it's, it's out, that you currently have reavers. Regressives, Pharisees, gas holes, and assations. Take off gas holes and assations. Oh. Yeah. No, he's right. Dang he's it. He's right. Add delusionists. Delusionists. And you have regressives? Yes. So what do you have? Regressives, delusionists, and turds? Assations and <laughs> Pharisees. Let's Take just... off assations. Well, let's what, just what do you want me to put on there? Turds. For, yeah. Oh, God. It's just, it's just so, it's low-hanging fruit, it but is. it's funny. It's a big it's, it's funny. Okay. I think it's between the turds and the Pharisees, personally. I will <laughs> not, I do not want to remove Pharisees. I don't either. I don't either. I don't. Okay, he's outvoted. That's fine. That's give me fine. the four as, now. As long as my voice has now, been heard, Now, this hasn't that's been fine. sent out I yet. No, I'm it? waiting for All you right, to give me the go-ahead. Now, what are the four that are going to be sent out? Delusionists, turds. Jesus. Pharisees and regressives. I don't think we're going to come up with four that are more simple to grasp. How about 
pharisaic turds. No, no. <laughs> yes. We want to keep it as simple as possible. Hi, Joe. The woke are an unhappy and miserable lot who won't rest until everyone is as miserable as they are. I hereby submit les miserables for your consideration as a new term for the woke in our world. Unfortunately, Rookie will be the only one who will be able to pronounce this new label correctly. That's that's a nice effort, but doesn't make the list. Doesn't make the list. Uh, once again, Reaver's the finalist. Uh, option one, delusionists. Option two, <laughs> turds. <laughs> option three, Pharisees. And option four, regressives. Okay. Uh, those are the four going out. Tweet can we net. come up? Can we come up with words to make turds an acronym? That that would well, that'd be a big project. I'm voting for Pharisees right now, just so you know. Oh, I can't I'm, I can't vote on my own poll. Wait, did you Whoa. post it already? Yeah, it's on the Twitter. Oh boy, too late now. Get well, no my going back. my choice is Pharisees. I. Well, then get out there and it's vote. But I, I, I have to go with what the GLers vote. Put an end time on this. I did. I, uh, Monday. Jeez. 59, 58. <laughs> what do you want? Fair, I'll, I'll do Pharisees. Now, too. Regressives did make the list. It did. And Delusionists made the list. Correct. Turd and Pharisees. Yeah. All right. Aren't we elegant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they are turds. <clears throat> so far, we have one vote. This this president of, the, of, of, of the garage logic Twitter. This president account. of okay. Hamlin was a turd, and the people at McAllister are turds. Yes, but this isn't wokeism. Isn't limited to the failed academy. No. That's just where turds are most prevalent, or Pharisees. Hmm. Oh, I see Pharisees winning right now. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't hit the refresh. Yeah. Oh wow, you're right, Kenny. We got eight votes so far. How about that? You know, I'm going to read you something. A guy sent me, a friend of mine. It's it, it's uh, it's on topic, uh, considering the behavior of Pharisees. Okay. Uh, this is a fellow who, uh, well, I'll just read it to you. Uh, he knows his stuff is what you're trying to say. I have voted 40% Pharisees right now to the other 20% for the other three. I, can you vote for me, or do I have to do it on my own you phone? you got to do it for your own, yeah. All right, I got this from a guy last night, a buddy of mine. I'm in San Francisco for work. Two things to report. I don't have, I don't have much time for fun, but I tried to come up with a tiny theme, and my theme was Joe DiMaggio. I got up and went to Mass this morning at his childhood parish in the Italian part of town, North Beach. After his courthouse wedding to Maryland, the two of them took photos on the steps of St. Peter's and Paul. This evening, on a quick walk, I ducked into the Iron Butterfly across the street from the courthouse where they had their reception. Hmm. Uh, number two, point number two, this town is a progressive hellscape. <laughs> In 2021, oh. the city council passed an ordinance that made shoplifting of goods valued under $950 a misdemeanor. What? Every store is either A, closed, or B, has security at the door who let in a few people at a time. Hmm. It's painful to see. And then I then uh, I moved down, and we learned that he also says he sent, he sent me some videos. I remember talking about them, uh, the lessening of the charge. I remember us discussing yeah. that. Yeah, and he said, uh, then he sent videos. He said, the video is of a discount store called Ross. It's probably easier to buy a toothbrush in Kabul. I'm one of the few people without a mask on. All right. In all seriousness, this is my fifth week in a row on the road. The previous four have been to suburban Miami. Give me Ron DeSantis in Florida over this bleep hole all day long. And then we learn. Wow. Uh, we learn uh, Florida. I can just walk into a store and buy anything because this city is run by authoritarian socialists and populated by wealthy 25-year-old Facebook employees. I can't. I went to Shanghai in 2018 and had more freedom of movement than I do in San Francisco. Wow. Worse than Portland and Seattle, huh? I wish this guy, I don't know if, if his travels will take him to Portland and Seattle, but he would. I would, I would imagine wow. he would have a similar report. I would love to hear his report on other cities yeah. uh, around the country. Yeah, well, that was I, interesting. He, just, he, he, uh, I he love, has reported on my uh, what he thinks has been tremendous improvements I love in the, the state of Florida. I love the term hmm. progressive hellscape. Yeah. That's so spot on. It's just a shame. 
It's just a shame the closer you get to this country's tallest buildings, the more the Pharisees have ruined it. God, I love the way that works. You know it right away. Instantly you know it right away. It turns works too. Yeah. Get ready for your first round of the year for golf at the 2023 Minnesota Bank. What is it? Choice Bank Golf Show at the Minneapolis Convention Center. A week from today, we'll Uh be there through Sunday, the February the February through Sunday, Feb 26, live podcast. Score North will be there. We'll be there. Food, beverages, great deals on the latest equipment, accessories, and so much more. Uh, get news of your favorite resorts. There'll be golf lessons from local pros and your chance to win a hundred grand mm. at the Nelson Marine Lo- Nelson Marine Long Putt Contest. But here's the best part. I've just been amazed by this for the last week. Tickets are twelve dollars online, MinnesotaGolfShow.com. Mm-hmm. Tickets are twelve bucks online. With the ticket, you get fourteen free rounds from TwinCitiesGolf.com. That's a value of nearly five hundred bucks, plus a coupon for twenty bucks off at PGA Tour Superstore. Buy your tickets today at MinnesotaGolfShow.com. Presented by Choice Bank, and thanks in part to Nelson Marine. Waggle Golf, X Golf Minnesota, Lift Bridge Brewing, and your select Buick GMC dealers. It's the Rook here with an old friend, Ray and Welter Heating. They're online at welterheating.com. I'm going to give you their phone number, but I'm going to give you a little background on this family run business for generations. And yes, uh, they do all the order, installation, replacement, they've all sorts. There's a great laundry list of things that they do, the people that they work with. They work with the best uh, products in the industry. And if you want to know more about them, check out the website, welterheating.com. You know, there's a lot of companies out there and there's a lot of choices. I'm asking you to go with the choice with the family run business that's been on Garage Logic before and said, you know what, it's about time we come back. Uh, they've been busier than a one armed paper hanger, but they said they want to remind people that the old school out the old schoolers are out there and they're ready for over one hundred years and four generations. They're Minneapolis based. They are not fly by night. They have repaired more than 100,000 home heating systems, central air conditioners, and air quality purifiers. Now, they told me when I do these spots to not just read um, you know, uh, the products that they work with and, and bore people with, oh, here's your air conditioning or furnace repair. They want to stress the fact that they're garage logicians, family-owned, and they're here for you and have been for over 100 years. Who are you going to trust? During the winter months, their team is on call 24 hours a day for emergency service, and they pride themselves on the comfort they provide to your home and the quality of work. They stand behind it. Call Ray and Welter Heating Company today for prompt professional service in your area, and they service everybody. Welterheating.com, 612-825-6867-5960. Is it? <laughs> is it Friday? Do some damn is thing. It's the music or Let something. Go Friday. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware <laughs> stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Kenny, bring, yeah. me, yeah. bring me the funk. Yeah. <laughs> they are the real deal. Liberty Safe's the real deal. Actually, you know what? They're the only deal, better than all the rest, made in the United States of America, offering the best fire protection money can buy, transferable lifetime warrant- warranties, and courtesy of our pal Rich at Maple Grove Lock and Safe, professional delivery and an in- and installation is available. Protect your valuables with the best safe made. The entire Liberty lineup is amazing and will protect your goodies. No matter what calamity comes your way, you can find your Liberty Safe at Maple Grove Lock and Safe, 6901 East Fish Lake Road. Stop in, say hi to our guy, Rich, but arm yourself with information first. Skip on over to maplegrovelockandsafe.com, then stop in and tell Rich that Geo sent you. Is Dan Pilla joining us? I'll say. Dan? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm well, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Dan is our tax guy. We touch base every once in a while to learn how doomed we are. And uh, <laughs> what is the latest, sir, that you uh, you wish to advise us? Well, well, the latest, Joe, I think, is uh, is this uh, move in in the House to adopt the fair tax. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's uh, there's uh, uh, the legislation that's been discussed here. It's, it's really been on the table for about 20 years. This law called the fair tax which would abolish the Internal Revenue Service and the income tax altogether 
in favor of a national retail sales tax. Now, I know you guys have talked about this in the past. Uh, I, I've done a great deal of work on this national sales tax, sales tax idea. And in fact, Joe, I wrote a book in 1992, all right? That's, that's, that's how old this idea has been around. Right. Uh, in 1992, I wrote a book that, uh, that created the legislative proposal that became the fair tax 10 years later. Mm-hmm. And so I did, I did the groundwork on this thing in, in creating the, the legislative model that would work to abolish the IRS and the income tax. I, I like to say, Joe, I'm the only guy in America dedicated to putting himself out of business uh, <laughs> because if, if, if this fair tax idea passes, and, and that's a pretty giant if, frankly, uh, if it passes, I, 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 and, and, it, and it passes in the, in the model that I proposed, yeah. I, I'd be out of a job. Well, tell us the model you proposed. The model I proposed would, would be to take all five of the major taxes that exist at the federal level, talking about the personal income tax, the corporate income tax, the estate and gift tax, the Social Security tax, and the unemployment tax. When I say Social Security tax, I'm talking about the tax, not the benefit program, Mm right? Well, let's not get confused here. We're talking about the funding mechanism. Mm -hmm. I would take all five of those taxes. They are responsible for collecting literally 98.5% of all federal revenue. The the balance of the percent and a half is collected through import duties and and, uh, and certain excise taxes and so on. But the heart and soul of the money is coming from from those five taxes. I would abolish all of them. Right. And I would replace the revenue with one comprehensive national retail sales tax on consumption goods and services at the point of purchase. Mm -hmm. All right? You'd, you'd, You'd set the rate... In, in amount that would be uh, at, a, at a level that would be sufficient to replace the revenue. So we're not necessarily talking about cutting revenue, although that's a different discussion, and I certain, most certainly would cut federal revenue, but that's a different discussion. To replace the revenue, we would set the rate at, at such a point as it would do that. So it would be a revenue-neutral proposition. What happens then, Joe, is we make the sales tax collectible uh, at the point of purchase, businesses across America are already collecting sales taxes. We already know that. And so the federal sales tax would be collected piggyback with the state sales tax, and businesses that collect the sales tax would pay the state sales tax or would pay the federal sales tax to their state governments piggyback with the state sales tax revenue. Right. The federal government would in turn collect from the states, right. not the individuals. Right. If we did that, Joe, then we would reduce the collection point. This is a far more efficient system because think about this for a minute. The federal, the fed, those five taxes that I just described to you are collected from over 260 million different collection points. And when I say collection points, I'm talking about the number of federal tax returns that are filed, income tax returns, corporate tax returns, employment tax returns, estate returns, all right, two, about, two, about 260 million of them, and of course the number goes up every year. We would reduce the collection points from 260 million down to just 50. Not 50 million, just 50. The which states. Of course is the number of states, exactly right. So the federal government would go to the states to collect the revenue. They would not, the federal government, therefore, would not have its hands in the pockets of individual citizens and businesses. Now, think about this for a minute. What that means is there'd be no such thing as any federal income tax returns anymore. No citizen would be required to make and keep records, to file returns, to go through audits, to answer notices, to deal with collection problems. All of that stuff would be gone. All of it would be gone. Let's go here. Let's go here. This is what I'm talking about. Run us through an example. Uh, Mom goes to Target. Mom goes to Target. She fills up her basket. She goes to the she goes to the checkout counter. They ring up a hundred dollars worth of goods and services. The state sales tax goes on top of that. The federal sales tax goes on top of that. You're not going to pay taxes on taxes, so the federal sales tax would not be calculated on the – it would be calculated on the total of goods only purchased, not on the goods plus the state sales tax that's on there. Now, to replace the revenue, this is what, this is what gets jittery about the idea, Joel, is to replace the revenue, you're going to need a federal sales tax of about 23%. Mm-hmm. And people say, oh, my heavens, I, go to, I, I spent $100 worth of goods and services, and now I got $23 in taxes on top of that? Right. You know, the sad answer is yes. Yep. But, but the problem there is we are already paying that tax in other ways. 
obviously the income tax coming out of your paycheck, the Social Security tax coming out of your paycheck. And here's the hidden part of this that people don't realize. The price of every product and service in the marketplace is pumped up significantly because of what we call compliance costs. And when I talk about compliance costs, what I mean is this. For every dollar you pay in taxes, it costs you another 65 cents to get it there. Mm -hmm. The costs of making and keeping records, of preparing tax returns, of going through audits, of doing all the things that businesses have to do to comply with the tax law drives the price of goods and services up. Now, for folks that are filing simple tax returns, Joe, uh, a, 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 a short form, for example, or just a simple tax return with a Schedule A that itemizes a few deductions, their compliance burden is not 65% of the tax. But here's, here's where the burden lies. It lies on the shoulder of businesses. Because, first of all, four out of every five dollars, well, it, it, call it three out of every five dollars that's paid into the IRS is not paid in by individuals. It's paid in by businesses through wage withholding. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds of all of the problems that people have with the IRS are focused on businesses because of the, because of the morass of rules they have to follow with employment tax compliance and, and the, you know, the massive income tax rules that businesses face. And so the businesses are the ones that are bearing this burden of compliance. And so the they pass that cost. Don't make any mistake about believing that that cost is not passed on to consumers. It is. So while we would have a 23% increase uh, in, in, in the price of goods and services at the marketplace, you've got to understand that everybody would be getting their full paycheck. You wouldn't have any wage withholding coming out of that paycheck wow. anymore. So thus you'd have the 23 bucks available when you go to Target for 100 bucks worth of goods. That, that's exactly right. The money would be in your pocket. That's one thing. But here's another thing, and this is very important, and that is the cost of that $100 worth of products at Target would significantly drop because the compliance burdens are no longer built into those products. And mm -hmm. remember, it's not only the producer of the products that bears a compliance burden. Target has a massive tax compliance burden for federal income taxes and employment taxes, and all of that would go away. Uh, of the 260 million tax returns that are filed in this country, Joe, about 110 million of them are business tax returns, and most of those are employment tax returns. Employers have to file five employment tax returns every year, plus the W-2s, plus the W-3s, plus the 1099s. Every sing Last year, this number goes up every single year, last year there were more than 4.5 billion, that's with a B, billion information returns filed with the IRS forms 1099 and W-2. This is a massive expense, Joe. It's a tremendous cost to businesses that would all go away if we went to a comprehensive retail sales tax. Why is it, why is it so complicated? What happened? Why is the tax law so complicated? Yes. Well, there's a simple answer to that, and that is this. At some point along the way, uh, in the 1940s, in, it, it, it began, the 1970s, it started happening in earnest. The tax laws were used to achieve, to, to, to do something besides raise revenue. Mm -hmm. Taxes are used now today for three different reasons. And only one of those reasons, Joe, is to raise revenue. Mm -hmm. right? Now, you'd think that that would be the only reason for, for imposing taxes. Right. The, the only thing we're going to do is raise money to fund the legitimate functions of government. What else would you do with taxes? Well, here's what they do with taxes in Washington, and this is why it's so complicated. Number one, they use taxes as a form of congressional currency. They use tax laws, I should say, as a form of congressional currency. So, Joe, you and I are, are representatives or senators in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the United States Congress. Uh, I'll support your plan if you support my tax plan, and uh, you'll support my plan if I support your tax plan. And so we're buying and selling legislative favors using the tax code as currency. Okay. It happens all the time. Yep. That's number one. Number two, the tax laws are used to achieve somebody's definition of social justice. And, and nowhere was this clearer than with the tax laws that were passed by the Biden administration here in the last couple of years. But, 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 but Biden didn't start this, all right? So I want to be fair about this. This has been going on in Congress for 50 years, where we penalize this particular business activity because we don't think that's favorable. 
and we benefit some other particular business activity because we want to encourage that. All right. The fundamental principle of economics, Joe, a fundamental principle of economics is what you tax, you get less of what you subsidize, you subsidize, you get more of. So they use the tax laws to punish certain behavior that they don't want to see happen, such as fossil fuels, for example. And they, they, uh, they reward other behavior that they want to encourage, such as electronic, uh, electric vehicles, yep. as another example. Yep. So, so this, this has happened before our eyes, and this is why we've got a tax code now that consists of 4 million words that were changed more than 6,000 times just since 2001 alone. The tax code is complicated because it's used for reasons other than just simply collecting revenue. And if we focused on revenue collection right off the bat, tax laws could be remarkably more simple than what they already are. But that ship has sailed a long time ago, and now we're just we're mired in this morass of nonsense called tax called tax uh, called uh, uh, tax amendments. Tax simpl- they call it tax simplification. Of course, it's never simpler. But uh, tax reform, that's the word I was looking for. We're mired in this, in this nonsense called tax reform, which every time is designed to create some sense of social justice pointed in one direction or another. The biggest lie told to, uh, to us by the people on the third rail is that there's, there are groups who don't pay their fair share. I, I desperately want to yell out every time I hear that, but you people wrote the tax laws. Well, not only did they write the tax laws, Joe, but that just simply is not true. Right. right? I know that. But they get away with it. It's a lie. It plays well. It, uh, it, it's, uh, it, but it's a canard. You idiots wrote the tax laws. Trump actually used that in one of the debates with Hillary Clinton, mm-hmm. if you yeah, remember. It, yeah, I do remember, Kenny. In fact, I was just going to say that, that Trump said he stood there on the platform and he said, uh, you know, if I didn't pay any taxes, it's because I was using the tax laws that you idiots wrote. That's right. right. Of, of course I'm going to take advantage of them. And my response to that is if there's a particular provision in the tax code that gives a benefit to a taxpayer and that taxpayer qualifies for the benefit, you're an absolute dope if you don't claim it. Right. And I'll give you a perfect example of it, Joe, is the, is the employee retention credit. The employee retention credit is a refundable credit was created by the CARES Act in March of 2020 that gives money back to employers. So millions of employers across the country have gotten up to almost $2 trillion in refunds back from the federal government in money they never paid in in the first place. So it's, so it's not just a refund. It's a welfare payment to businesses through this employee retention credit. Well, guess what? If you're an employer that had people on your payroll during during the, the government shutdown periods in 2020 and 2021, and you're entitled to claim this credit, why wouldn't you claim the credit? Mm-hmm. And so now the government, the government comes back and says, oh, you're some kind of a tax cheater, you claim this credit? That's absurd. It's nonsense. Right. If I qualify, I'm taking the benefit of it. And I'll give you the simplest example that I can possibly give you. Under what circumstances would, an, would a homeowner not claim a tax deduction for their mortgage interest. Right. That, that's exactly what's going on here. If we've got benefits in the tax code, they're put there for a reason. Take advantage of the ta- of the benefits. That's by definition, that's not tax cheating. That's taking advantage of the rules that are in the code that they put there. Okay, you got your musket and you got your beaver skin cap on, and you're marching <laughs> through the you're, you're you're marching through the wilderness here. Where are you going? Where am I going? What well, do you want to happen? I'll, 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 I'll tell you this. Uh, I, was in, I was involved in a, in a great number of congressional debates in the middle 1990s when this thing started to take off. Uh, that led to, by the way, the IRS Restructuring and Reform Act. That's a whole different story. We can get into that some other time. But, but what, what I believed at the time when I was pushing for the sales tax issue is that Congress would come to its senses – now, this is my naivete speaking, so guys, mm-hmm. don't laugh at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believed that Congress was going to come to its senses and, and, and see the, the merits of this plan and understand the, the vast benefits of this plan over, what we, over this idiocy that we have now, and they were going to, they were going to adopt it and, 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 and just and do the right thing, right? Well, you know, I grew up, and, and I realized that that wasn't going to happen, that Congress was never going to do the right thing for the right reason that they would come to the conclusion that they have to change the system 
when the system begins to collapse under its own weight. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are right now, Joe. We're at the point now where the Internal Revenue Service is so broad and their reach is so vast and the, and, the, and the reach of the tax code itself is so vast that it's starting to collapse under its own weight. I talked about the collection points of $260 million, the uh, information returns of $4.5 billion information returns. You, you know, we, we've got the IRS right now that's still backlogged, over 15 million documents that haven't been processed. We're talking about 5 million letters and north of 10 million tax returns from last filing season that still haven't been processed, and here we are now on the threshold of a new filing season. So this weight is collapsing the IRS. The IRS's uh, mission has been expanded in a, in a great number of other areas. The, the best example of that is the, uh, is the Obamacare health care uh, uh, enforcement that the IRS is supposed to do. They're, they're, they're the police that are enforcing health care. Well, why is the IRS enforcing health care? The reason is because the, the, the process was put into tax returns and into the tax law. That's where it, that's where it was added. All of these additional burdens are crushing the IRS, and this was the excuse that was being used when the debates were going on in Congress two years ago to give $80 billion to the agency. They're underfunded, they're overworked, they're understaffed. Well, the reason for that is because of this mission creep thing that's going on. And so that is collapsing the IRS, and I believe as that problem gets worse, and I don't believe it's going to get better, as that problem gets worse, Congress is going to be forced to reevaluate the entire system, and that's when we're going to get legitimate discussion about uh, changing the system. Now, here's the other conclusion that I came to at that time, late 1990s we're talking about now, and that is this, that we have to pick this off a state at a time. There's 46 states out there that have an income tax, Joe. In most cases, their income tax is just as bad as the IRS as Minnesota is an example. It's a mess. So we pick this off a state at a time. Well, you got no shot at this state. Well, at this point in time, you're exactly right. But I wrote the legislative model in, two, in, the, in the year 2000, so 20 plus years ago. That was actually, uh, and, and I made a presentation to the uh, to the uh, Republican caucus at that time, about 50 members of the House and the Senate, on adopting this for the state of Minnesota, and and that gained some traction. It didn't go anywhere. About three years ago. Or, uh, yeah, call it three years ago, I testified before the Minnesota Senate uh, Finance Committee on abolishing the state income tax and going to this national retail sales tax. And I've been working with a number of other states around another, uh, a number of other groups around the country working in their own states to abolish it. I believe if we can get the states to abolish their income taxes state by state, that that is going to build momentum to abolish the Internal Revenue Code and the IRS. What do we talk about the next time we chat? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's see what the news looks like at that time, and let's talk about whatever's in the news. Let, let the uh, legislators say, hold my beer, is what yeah. he's trying to say. <laughs> okay. Dan Pilla, uh, give me your website. Yeah, the website is taxhelponline.com. That's all one word, no spaces. Taxhelponline.com. He's our GL tax guy. That's right. Dan, thank you. We'll be in touch. My pleasure. Thank My you. pleasure, guys. Thank Have you. a good weekend. Take it thank easy. Thank you. We need, a, we need a national sales tax mm -hmm. uh, for uh, reasons that uh, he knows, but they tend to overwhelm me. He knows too much. He throws a lot at you. Well, he knows too much. Mm -hmm. well, but it's also, you, you laid it out perfectly when you introduced him on the show. It's how should we feel depressed today? Yeah. <laughs> well... Uh, did you correct the uh, poll question? I did. I deleted the uh, the previous one and um, started over. I started working. all the way over. So if you'd like to, I, I even titled it Take Two. We are attempting to replace the word woke, Kenny. Right. Um, something Dan said struck me, and we're making the same mistake he did. Uh, to paraphrase him, he said he uh, thought the uh, the Senate or government, whoever, would come to their senses. Right. That's never going to happen. Never not, happens. Not and happen. Matthew and I are guilty of this with this lawnmower ban thing. Because well, 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 you're being optimistic. We're being optimistic. Yeah. And, Matt, we should know better. I think probably. I think you I think have so. the right to be optimistic. I do think that this ban will not take place but I merely think it will not take place as soon as they wish it to. I think it will take place. Yeah, you, you're right. They'll push it back to, right, yep. Uh, I have a note on that from a guy named uh, Jeremy, 
who's been listening to us and writing to us for years, and I know he's in the industry. Okay. And he said, I wrote in earlier this week as I was listening on my 115 horsepower John Deere moving snow piles. <laughs> Upcoming is my 34th year of running my business. I started by my dad putting an ad in the paper when I was 16 to start cutting grass for $10 an hour. Last year, we had revenues into seven figures. Even that number, I am not a large operation, but we do have to hustle. I'd like to clear up some stuff with regards to the electric equipment. Toro has has on the market an electric grandstand. This is the more that a vast majority of landscape maintenance companies use when you see employees standing behind the mower on a platform. Mm -hmm. The mower will operate up to eight hours per day per charge. While that does not seem like a lot, the engine will start and stop as you step on and off the machine, unlike current operations where if you step off the machine to move a dog leash, maybe move a chair out of the way, pick up some garbage, the engine continues to run. Also, the spindles are driven with electric motors and are actually spinning faster than the current belt drive blades, which will give you a better cut quality. Hmm. There's another company called Greenworks making commercial-grade electric equipment. The biggest drawback for most contractors is the price. Current price for an electric grandstand is roughly $35,000. A gas-powered grandstand with the same deck size and mowing capacity is twelve grand. Oh, my. However, wow. with the electric grandstand, everything is electric from the wheel motors to the blade spindles to the engine. And one selling point is there is a minimal maintenance cost for the life of the mower. Typically, contractors will keep a grandstand for roughly 1,500 hours. To break down the cost per hour for the grandstand is currently not beneficial to a commercial operator. However, once you get into the urban core... There are numerous, numerous people who would absolutely pay more to hire a contractor using renewable energy equipment. Mm. In other words, the euphorians. Yeah. Not well, to mention, while you still hear the loud whir of the blades, without a doubt operating the mower is quieter. It would be beneficial to both the operator as well as the neighborhood. We currently use electric handheld equipment on different job sites. While not 100% compatible to the gas-powered counterparts, there have been great strides made to where it is feasible to have electric-powered and held equipment on the trailer. While Kenny will not appreciate this next comment, electric handheld equipment for for something that does not get used frequently is a blessing as the carburetor does not gum up on a piece of equipment Uh that might be used 10 minutes and then thrown into a trailer or the back of a shed not just to be used for another three or four months. While I'm not going to sell out my fleet of 31-horse diesel-powered Kubota Zero Turns tomorrow for 100% electric, there will definitely be a market for these mowers in the near future, and you will start seeing them being who is with more frequent... And you will start seeing them uh, with more frequency over the next few years. As always, good luck, Jeremy. So they're there, but they're terribly expensive. I wouldn't buy one. Would you buy one? No, but I mean, I know what this guy's. This guy's been. uh, This guy's been knowledgeable for twenty five years, and uh, I know he's come a long way in the business. And uh, it doesn't sound like he's ready to go all electric yet. You can buy two. You can see the wisdom of it. You can buy two grandstands, uh, gas powered, for the price of one electric. That's right. I would love an efficient leaf blower that really really works hard really blows hard be awesome in the city because everybody in the city hates the noise of leaf blowers they just hate it yeah you would think that uh heather edelson and jerry newton you know there's the old saying how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time there you go well you would think they would have uh, bitten off less in this preposterous uh proposal you would think maybe Maybe right now, maybe they'd go after leaf blowers and then wait a couple of years. They've been they... going. I, I was searching the Star Tribune before the show for um, stories about this, and they've been going after leaf blowers in the Star Tribune since at least 2016. Oh There's my a God. Lot. Before that. Oh There's my God. 2000. No, before that? No, since the 90s. Yeah. Really? Yes. Okay. All How right. How do you prepare elephant? What would you, what would you make? One Just bite at a time. One bite at a time. Okay. One bite at a time. <laughs> Why don't you take a break here? You know, speaking of lawn equipment, lawnmowers, yeah, 
and the, and the like. Thanks to Dan Pilla, by the way. Yeah, we yeah. would like to welcome a brand new partner to the Garage Logic podcast. Do it. Are you ready? I'm talking about Anderson Brothers Outdoors. It's a pretty cool story, by the way. Uh, the owners are two brothers, Christoph and Justin. They started the business when they were in junior high school. Did you hear me, Joe? I did. They junior started high. this in junior high. Well, they're okay. GLers, apparently. They were just mowing lawns around the neighborhood. They kept at it. They worked their butts off, and now they have grown into a premier outdoor living business. It's Anderson Brothers Outdoors. It's a full design and build outdoor construction company. Whether you're interested in a custom natural wood or composite deck, a paver patio, hardscaping, pools, outdoor kitchens, or have something else in mind, they look forward to creating the outdoor space that you desire. I've seen their work. It's incredible. They will consult with you to design your dream outdoor living space. You can get to look at their personalized 3D rendering of their design. you got to the- slow down. You're, you've stopped breathing again. Emailers have told me you've stopped breathing again. I'm sorry. Yeah. You get to take a look at a personalized 3D rendering of the design prior to the project start, and you have to look at some of the amazing work that they have done. Check them out online. It's AndersonBrosOutdoors.com, B-R-O-S, AndersonBrosOutdoor.com. You can also find them at the Home and Garden Show at U.S. Bank Stadium, March 5th, 1st through the 5th. If you've been thinking of pulling the trigger on that dream outdoor space, well, the Anderson Bros are going to take care of you. AndersonBrosOutdoors.com. Please, please, please tell them that the Garage Logic podcast sent you their way. Rook here once again for a wonderful, wonderful outfit, the Minnesota Masonic Charities. They're online at mnmasoniccharities.org. Earlier this week, I told you about the guys in 1955, a group of Freemasons, Eastern Star members, got together looking for something to do in the community. They went to the U of M and said, what can we do? The U says, well, there's cancer everywhere. They asked the Masons to raise 500 grand to help build a new million-dollar 80-bed cancer hospital on the University of Minnesota campus. Masons went out and in short order, didn't raise half a million. They raised the entire million to build the hospital. That's a fabulous thing. With contributions exceeding $125 million, Minnesota Masonic Charities has established itself as the largest donor in the university's history. Who knew? Not you or not me, because you know what? They're pretty humble pie, and right now they've decided we do need to get our name out there. We do need to tell people what the great guys and gals have been doing with the Minnesota Masonic Charities and what they've done. They're grateful for the opportunity to serve the people of Minnesota and beyond in such a meaningful way. I want you to learn more. Forget this secret society stuff. The word is out, and they are huge fans of Garage Logic, and so many of them are garage logicians. Learn more at mnmasoniccharities.org. Tell them the Rook sent you. Plain and simple, Seafoam works. Kenny here, and if you log on to seafoamworks.com, you'll be treated to information on all the Seafoam products, the world-renowned deep creep penetrating fluid, the Seafoam top engine cleaner, a true warrior in the fight against grease, grime, and everything gross, and the Seafoam trans tune. Not only does that perform amazing work in your transmission, it's also a great solution for sketchy power steering pumps. Bug be gone, they've got that. Interior and exterior cleaners, high mileage, Marine Pro, and let's not forget the mainstay, the true miracle worker that saved us from countless trips to the shop and reprimands from our mechanics, the Seafoam Motor Treatment, our own local company with a global reach and a great product, Seafoam. <laughs> the propeller. Can we work. get going here? What are you laughing at, Alan? Alan, 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 Alan. We should have a contest to see who knows less about cars, <laughs> Roycey or Rookie. Boy, that'd be cool. We, we could get in it. Judd. We could get Judd oh, in God. there. Judd, Judd, Judd is a typical sports Did right I now. ever tell you about he the first know, time I rode in a car with Judd? <laughs> when I was producing his show, he said, oh, we'll ride to that event together in over in Somerset. And he had so much crap, I had to shovel it out of the passenger seat Looked just like to get Richard in there. Like Richard Ricey come back oh, to life. Oh, my God. Shit. The, the, Sid no, Sid was crap. unbelievable. Well, he Sid had a glove box that had a minimum of 50 credit cards yeah. in it. <laughs> 
Yes, <laughs> it also had new stuff yeah. that had never yeah. been. Wow. Uh, he bought Blacks. It. He didn't know about he, it. What did you do? Just grab it and toss it in the back seat? <laughs> the CD story is the greatest. Not only <laughs> did he not know how to load the CD, he didn't know how to get the CD out of the package. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't know how to work the AM FM radio. No, I figured that out for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> I think it's a trade. Now, you're a, you were a rare sports writer. That's why you didn't last in the field. You right. could do something yeah. with your hands. Most of, <laughs> most of us are just come. You know, we like to tell people what's wrong with them when we can't do a bleeping thing. You Meanwhile. Ever see, you ever see a sports writer golf? <laughs> <laughs> But meanwhile, in your in your toolbox was the yellow pages and the Visa card, right? <laughs> oh no! I left in Florida. She kept buying toolboxes. Yeah, you don't buy new. Two brand new toolboxes that uh, we took out the screwdriver and the pliers. Well, this other crap one was in there. Nobody knew what it was. As as someone who stayed at the estate in in Fort Myers, I can attest to the fact that. It was like mini Pearl was there. Everything had the tag on it still. <laughs> was there a clock in the box? Yes. There was a clock in the box. Including you gotta the, have a clock no, in the box. No, this is even better. Including the ladder. <laughs> Which one of those two is gonna climb up on a ladder? And for what reason would you buy a ladder? To take the clock out of the yeah, box. <laughs> There was a ladder. ladder. I did point out to my wife. I said, "Why is there a ladder in here? Would you, it was somebody doing work." She said, "No, it's your only clock." Cake. Yeah, I might have bought the ladder, ladder so the handyman didn't have to bring his own. Right. I don't yeah. know. Meanwhile, he pulls up in a van that's got fifteen of my. I had to have the ladder for the guy I hired to change the toilet seat when I was down there. You don't need a ladder for that. No. No, I, I got a sports don't. observation. All right, let's I go. Accidentally on. tuned to the Timberwolves last night oh, with two my. minutes. In 54 uh, seconds. We were still up then. Right? Left on the clock, mm -hmm. four-point lead, and then... Did, have uh, we scored since? I'm not sure we uh, scored since. What? I don't take that seriously. I'm sorry. I they just were, don't take uh, that seriously. They were 20 points ahead, uh, I think, still in the late in the third quarter, right? Yeah. Early in the fourth. Yeah, it was uh, it was a bad loss. This new uh, this new guard they got, the one they got from D'Angelo Russell... Mike Conley, he's 35 years old, and he's played with Rudy, and he's supposed to be a good playmaker, but he couldn't beat Will Reavers in a game of horse. <laughs> <laughs> he can't shoot. You know what my problem is? I don't trust him. I don't no. trust that they're giving me an effort. Yeah. Oh, they were trying. They well, were then trying. they're not very good. Well, they didn't have anybody to guard. Uh, uh, they won two nights earlier when Kyrie Irvin had 26 points in the fourth quarter, and they held on and somehow won that one. But last night, Bradley Beal, who's a really good guard for Washington, just did you see that? He just anytime he wanted to score, he yeah. just drove by him and yeah. laid it up the basket, and they all scratched their head and said, "What the hell's going on here?" But uh, I don't know. I got a wild yeah. observation I got, too. Let me give you one more yeah. thing on though. These guys though, their schedule is brutal. Yeah. The Wolves' schedule the rest of the year. They played the real easy part of their schedule early when they were screwed around. Last night well, was, was a an bad easy loss. Run. That was a bad loss. That was right. I blame the win. I mean, I give the one win for the uh, Wizards though, based on their nutrition. <laughs> Because my niece's husband oh, that's right. is their chef, and uh, when they're at home, husband. my yeah. niece's, uh, you know, uh, Adrian's husband Steve is their chef. So I, they look very oh. new, you know, very. That's still a, had their energy in the fourth quarter. I think these teams have their own chef. Oh, oh yeah, and, and and when they're at home, he cooks them lunch and dinner and stuff like that. So. Is it Very true? nutritious meals. Is it true that Ovechkin has a big Italian meal before a game? That's what they say, yes. Yeah. I'm not out, please. Well, he's, he used to be a skater, you know, but now he just kind of occupies a shooter. space and waits for somebody to get in the puck. <laughs> Isn't he tr on the way back home, though? He's got a family issue. Yeah, I didn't know One that. of the parents must be in bad shape, but he's probably the only Russian that couldn't. Uh, I was going to say, can he risk going there? Oh, heavens, yes. He had Pootie or Big Buddies. Yeah. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. He, he, he and Pootie play hockey together. So, yeah, and, then, uh, and then they Pootie scores, all, score. yeah, scores all the goals. goals. I right. keep getting a letter from, I mean, an email from a guy saying, how come you're not writing about this? They didn't have friends of Hitler playing in the league here, you know. Yeah. They got Putin's buddies yep. playing, playing. Well, we got one right here, but we don't know if he's Pootie's buddy. No, I don't think he is. He's been pretty quiet about the whole subject, yes. which is smart. I don't blame them if they got relatives in in Russia or not, uh, you know. You don't want you don't want Pooty to. He's, he's a desperate man. We're, we're at, by the way, the twenty fourth is the anniversary of the invasion. The one year of what? February twenty fourth. The Russian invasion Ukraine. of Ukraine. Twenty yeah, fourth. Yes. Twenty yes. fourth. Yes. Say so. so my wild observation is yes. uh, very obvious. Uh, they can't score. No. They, they just can't uh, score. They, Is that key in hockey? And it's not they, for a lack of effort. Nailed it. I said, <laughs> but that, I got it. <laughs> I said this a couple days ago, talking to Judd and Phil. It's unfortunate that the Star Tribune has four columnists, and none of us are hockey guys, so we can say how stupid the Wild was mm-hmm. to uh, keep Dumba and let Fiala go. Mm-hmm. Fiala has about as has as many points as the four guys they kept. Mm-hmm. I mean, this Greenway is a statue, and uh, mm-hmm. and you know, like Dumbo's had a lousy year, and uh, Fiala, they, you know what? In the modern NHL, you got to score some goals. It's a game moves. You got to have some goal scores. Uh, Guerin was interviewed by they, they. They were the second game of a TNT doubleheader mm-hmm. Wednesday night, and the uh, whoever the announcers were interviewed Guerin before the start of the second period, or maybe before the start mm-hmm. of the third period. I can't remember. Did he look? Pl- did he look feisty? <laughs> he was. Uh, he was affable, but he was. He happened to. Uh, be getting talked to when Fleury gave up a no-brainer. Oh yeah, and there was you didn't hear gear. There was just this complete silence, <laughs> and these guys kept talking. And finally, they just said, "Well, thanks for joining us, Bill." And Bill said, "Okay, thanks, guys." And he he uh, he left the scene. But I, I don't think Billy was real happy. No. Well, uh, the other night they they only gave up two goals, but he, I mean he only gave up one goal, but it was or two goals, but. They were both bad, right? And then it was all Gearin could do. He also saw Erickson Eck approach the net with the puck, clearly had a shot, and almost panicked looking around for somebody to give the puck to. <laughs> oh, really? And Gearin, you could tell Gearin was really, really, Didn't like that. really holding himself oh, in man. and said, uh, "We uh, that could be a confidence problem. He's got to take that shot. <laughs> I, have oh. de- I have decided... Dean Evison is the second coming of Bud with the stern, oh. silver-haired look. You got the silver hair, yep. so he got the yep. same countenance. Yep. And he's got the glare. And you would, except it was harder to tell when Bud was really miffed. Right. When this guy's miffed. It ain't hard to tell with no, Dean. With so Dean, it, it, you can lip read. It's a lot of fun <laughs> yes, lip reading. Right. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. It looks like he's looking for the vacuum off quite often. <laughs> He's as good as Boudreaux with that word. He is. <laughs> uh, but not, I don't think, I don't know if we get it in the locker room as much. I, I don't know. I, Boudreaux I don't, would give it to you in the locker room. Mm. Oh, that's the greatest, one of the greatest tapes right, I've in, seen it. in history right. is, is him. All right, sit down. Now, everybody sit down here. And yep. It's like he's going to be a nice, oh, it's going to be a nice, nice I just saw room. It. I just saw it this week. It it was phenomenal. It filled me with joy. It was so foul. Well, because the setup is it's going to be a nice little pep talk. Yeah. 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 And he f bombs everybody in the room. Yeah. Oh, it was just delightful. (laughs) That is really the great. The great tradition of hockey that continues, they can't say a sentence without an no, F-bomb. No. I mean, we aren't that far removed from uh, the the uh, Trache and the fellas no, suggesting no, that uh, suggesting Brian Bellows uh, do something like to himself. boys right. better yeah. than yeah. girls. Issues, so. <laughs> but, yes. Royce, these guys would swear in church. Oh, that, oh, that's God, how, yes. how ingrained it is. Oh, that's right. That's why that 24-7 before the Rangers and uh, yes. Flyers, yes. my favorite ever, because they're two of the worst human beings that ever lived, Lavalette and Tor- Tortorella, and they just, they're the coaches, and they're just miserable louts, <laughs> yep. you know, with uh, foul mouths. It's I got fantastic. a dare sporting item. Okay. Tiger didn't look bad. No. How about those three birdies? Now, what did he shoot this morning? 
I got uh, it. I'll look it up. He had the early time this morning. But then he did something really stupid that made it all the papers. I don't what? think it made the local papers, what but it that? made the likes of the Daily Mail and that kind of stuff. What did he do? He outdrove just, uh, uh, Justin Thomas on a hole. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was hitting it a long way yesterday, uncharacteristically. Really? Wow. And he handed Justin Thomas a tampon. Oh. Really? Yeah. He thought that was funny. He right? thought that was funny, and I think Justin well, Thomas buddies, thought it was funny. I know they're buddies. Oh, they're buddies. But, but it's not But good. I just thought, uh, oh, no. No, no, no. No, no, we're, no. We're, we're, This is the Me Too generation. Come we on, don't, Tiger. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that no. Good. What time was Tiger I, supposed I, to tee I, off today? I think, it's, I I think it's funny. It's well, something we, Happy Gilmore would do. <laughs> yeah, I, but, you know, just. He's got sad eyes still, though. He's yeah. And he looks puffy to me. Yeah, he does. So he was. Free. He had to have the early time because he had the late time yesterday, or maybe he teed off in the middle of the day both times. I don't know. I'm trying to find you here. The PGA, the PGA leaderboard hasn't updated their the second round yet. Oh, well, they gotta have it up. They, well, it's a, only uh, well, it's 11, only eleven o'clock okay, out there. Eleven twenty. Right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Well, what I else you got on your mind before I let you go? Mm, let's see. What else do I have in my mind? I uh, bet you wish you had the state this week. What, what? Pitchers and catchers reporting down there. Yeah, I don't know. You're over it? I Somebody sent me a oh. picture of a house with snakes in it. Oh, what? Yeah. That's, 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 what would you do if they, you'd have to burn oh. down the house? Yep. You'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah. Did you see There's that no thing? Way. You, well, either that or getting rid of the snakes. Oh, I'm well, in trouble. Never... I think I might be in trouble at the, uh, with the Woodbury uh, folks, though, because I, uh, I was, my granddaughter's, my very mature granddaughter's turning 14 in April, and, uh, and we were talking to her dad the other day, and he says he's going to send her to uh, a, a, a convent in Maine. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I, su up. I suggested to her that I ch changed text with her, and I said, yeah. She says, send him to send me to florida and i'll do back to florida and i'll do it and then i send her a picture of the snakes and she freaked <laughs> out man i don't know you if know she... if you had a house with snakes in it and you uh, brought an exterminator in and he said i got them all you would never have a relaxing no, overnight no, sleep no, or ever. a relaxing <laughs> bowel movement no, no ever well oh. this I look, want you wonder if first. you wonder if this is a result of the hurricane when they well, yes. were sheltering, yes. you know, finding yes. shelter, and there were there had to be twenty five of them up there. Oh. You know what they? You know what another thing you, you hate about snakes? What they live in piles. Why yeah, don't they, they spread out a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you always living in a big? Who wants to live in a big pile? It's a snake orgy. Snake. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, doing stuff. they're doing impure things to each other in these. Uh, <laughs> Pile. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, they, just, they just really have no, they're just bad people. Uh, Tiger <laughs> is even through 13 Well, today. and he's that just today dropped two. Today? He dropped two he's dropped two. He's dropped today. It's today. Yep. What's, well, well, if he makes the cut, it's another moral victory. Yes. yes. I love that golf course. Oh, it's great. Isn't that the neat? The greens are as big as this table. You and I have to go there and drink iced tea on the balcony. Yes, that would be fantastic. Too hard to play it. Yeah, well, the, the greens are the smallest. And they were bumpy ones. too. The smallest ones are, the, I think, the smallest ones they play. But uh, that was uh, wasn't that uh, OJ's course? Didn't OJ was he a Riviera know. guy? I, I think know. so. You're right. I yeah, think he was a Riviera guy. A lot of yeah. Hollywood guys. So I got to tell you this. I uh, I uh, was uh, looked up. What was it? I the OJ was in this. I looked naked up. gun. No, no, Nordberg was uh, not 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 in this. It was a uh, what was I the other day? I looked up a column I'd written on Mark Spitz because okay. okay. I did a in '92 20th year anniversary of Munich. I was out in the California doing stuff, you yep. know, before the Olympics, and I called up Spitz and. I get, this is when you call him at home. Somebody gave you the home number, and yeah. he said, okay, I'll meet you next week. And then I called him the night before he was supposed to meet me, and he said, this 20th anniversary of Munich, you know, the whole thing. And uh, and he said, I get, tomorrow morning he's not going to work. Where are you? And I told him what hotel I was in, you know, not far from him. And he says, I'm going to call you in 15 minutes. 
and then you walk downstairs or you get downstairs and I'll be there in eight minutes. And he showed there and I would talk to him for two hours and it was fantastic. Hmm. It was great. But he was starting a new product. You know, he'd lost a lot of money in the housing decline. You know, he invested most of his money in the, you know, and then the recession after the late in the seventies uh, cost him a lot of money, but he was, he was developing products and his big hot new product in '92 was the O.J. Simpson juicer, the no. the, ju- oh, the no. orange juicer. No. <laughs> yeah, it, pr- it probably had about a year and a half run. Wow! wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. The <Probably>. juicer <laughs> it probably had about a year and a half going. He said, huh? "I think it's going to be big." I, uh, I Fruits and know. veggies that'll put him to sleep. <laughs> Why don't you wander in here again in a little bit and do your thing for Reavers? I will. I All will. right. Well, why don't you take a break? How about I hear from uh, our good friends remind at Remind me Eckberg once Lammers. more that uh, we're on the air when I'm yes, off. Yes, I will. Off the uh, I will yeah. do that, Patrick. The I'll town council that. loves it when you grace you got us an with estate your plan? You got an estate plan? Uh, <laughs> Tell me yes, and if you don't, I'm sending you to Eckberg Lammers. Because everyone needs one. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, I think there was a yes. My plan is to die even. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let the little SOBs care for themselves. All right. All right. That's that's Pat's version of the state plan. That's but plan A. I'm Here's not plan sure B. That, I'm not sure that keeps your life's achievements Tell out of the courts. Plan B. The goals in estate planning. I don't care how old you are. Get this done with Eckberg Glamours. Avoid court. Minimize taxes. Control your wishes. Uh, Eckberg Lammers is doing this, been doing this for more than 70 years. One of the greatest known law firms in Metro and Western Wisconsin. They'll help you with uh, issues of children, you know, guardianship, things like that. They'll help you if you're selling property within the family, the old lake cabin. They'll help snowbirds figure out their tax consequences of being a snowbird. They'll help businesses, small businesses. When you sell, you have a transition you must follow. But the best thing of all, Eckberg Lammers will keep you out of the courts. And don't be afraid of the word estate. That doesn't mean wealth. Whatever you have is your estate. And you want your kids to have all of that handled smoothly. Because we're going to die. That's it. Right. All going to die. no way around it. All going to die. There's no way around it. Make an appointment with these guys. They do miracles for people. Uh, call Eckberg Lammers at 651-439-2878. Or visit Eckberg Lammers at EckbergLammers.com. Also, before you die, get yourself a new drinking water system from Hofferman Water. I am going to slow down and tell you how great my water is. Look at I got I brought my bottle in today, oh, yeah. right That's there. Cool. Kinetico and is. Hofferman Water bring me water every single day that I bring into this studio. Listen, I made the switch a couple of years ago uh, with my home water system because I had awful, awful water in the city of Carver, Minnesota. So I discovered Hofferman Water and Kinetico, and holy cow, did it make a difference! And I've been a customer of theirs for years now and have been very satisfied. You and your family will be too. So why don't you do this? Go online, hoffermanwater.com. That's their website. If you go online, you can see every single different system that they have to offer, whether it's a water softener or maybe an iron rust or odor filtration system or a brand new drinking water system that you want for your kitchen. That's right. A new system from Kinetico can do so many things that other systems just simply cannot do. It's going to cut down on your salt usage, but it's also going to protect your appliances. And you get that new system and your showers are better, so is your laundry, and of course, your drinking water. So get in touch with my friends at Hofferman Water today, 952-894-4040. That's 952-894-4040. Or like I said, just visit their website, HoffermanWater.com. Hofferman Water has been proudly serving the state of Minnesota for over 50 years. Tell them you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. Today is Friday. T G T I Friday. It's a scramble. 
DK Mags works very hard to keep a steady flow of the most modern and trendy firearms and ammunition in the store. DK Mags can also t- also take special orders on specialty items or uh, hard to source items. Hop on the website dkmags.com, start shopping. Uh, DK Mags has a vast amount of knowledge right there in their on-site gunsmith staff and plenty of outside resources for those difficult or challenging gunsmithing issues. Uh, And DK Mags has the buying power of a much larger business, but they keep the small town local business feel. And they know a lot of us by name. It's, It's really cool. Fair price and quality firearms and a wonderful staff at DK Mags. They're on Old 8 in New Brighton and on the web, dkmags.com. Uh, how are you? Hey. None hey. of your business. None. None. I, did, I didn't. Did I just hear the scramble theme? You did. No, yeah. Did I? Yeah, we're yeah, done here, Joe. You. We're done. No, I got to tell you because something. they come no, to us we're from. Done. We're done. No, we're done. No, we're, we're done. Not. Longa, longa. Got, you, you're going to broach that's this brother. topic of Marsh hate brothers. that you're going to no, uh, broach. No, I decided uh, not to. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Well, then go ahead, Joe. Uh, well, I got a note from our buddy Carl down in Northfield. Is it hot down there? Northfield. He said, this was sent to me. I'm going to read it. Even though I can't verify it, it might as well be true. Whoa. And if Carl says it's true, this was sent to me by a friend in Cincinnati. Perhaps a rookie's daughter has been forced to deal with someone like this. Uh-oh. Try to imagine what sort of home this poor soul lives in. Their parents are either already crazy or cause this child to be crazy, or the parents will be driven crazy by the child. I'd be willing to bet if this child were homeschooled and prevented from using social media, he, she, they would be perfectly okay. And then he writes, this is from a teacher I know at a top local public high school with mostly upper class white kids. Here are the rules the teacher must follow for a new 12th grader. Okay. I have a new student. I am not joking. I just finished reviewing their accommodations. Here are the general terms of their behavioral education plan. They are non-binary and will wear a pin indicating what gender they prefer each day. Pronouns are they, them when addressing the student. They are soothed by social media games which have been pre-approved by the parent. To reduce student anxiety, they will be permitted to play games in five-minute increments during class instruction. Every five minutes, they may be redirected to classwork and will redirect their attention to the best of their ability. Redirection may cause them to become very agitated and tantrum. This is usually expressed by banging their head on the desk three to five times and panting. If tantrums appear to be painful for them, no additional redirection of behavior should occur during that class period. In addition to tantrums, they may run from the classroom and or school building when anxious. The classroom teacher must reasonably give chase until certain of the student's safety. If the student cannot be tracked outside of the school building, the parent uh, then said the police may be called. All notes and class material should be provided to the student all si- all assignments and testing should be given extended time. I don't think she's encountered that, and I'll tell you why. No. no. Now, Carl, uh, he said that he got this from somebody he knows. Okay. Uh, it it that, that wouldn't surprise me if that's true. Mm-hmm. I would agree. It's right. 12, look, these are 12th graders. First and foremost, the person I know... Deals with first graders. Yeah. And uh, the big number two is Asian population, uh, black, uh, minorities. They're not, they don't really worry about, they're going as a male or a female. They're going as boy, girl. They're not going as well, they're young, she, good. her, he, him. Good. So that's maybe a small ray of hope that this, these young people aren't into that. I got a note from Bob who writes about cardboard boxes. Hi, Bob. (laughs) Not my dad, is it? (laughs) There's nothing like a good, sturdy, corrugated box. What I do is flatten them and store them flat, and I always have some good packing tape on hand for when I need to use them. But this is the part that really got me. I, as well as you, flew cardboard at Waldorf and can still identify the flute sizes. We might have crossed paths back in the day. I believe you were summer help while I was putting food on my family. Longtime listener, Bob. 
Yeah. Maybe Bob. he was right between you and Shorty. No, that was Fawcett. That was F- Shorty was putting food on his family, which is why when I was making Fawcett's, those guys were so reluctant. They were doing peace work, <laughs> and they were so reluctant to come over and save my sorry ass. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I met a lot of guys at Horner who they were that was they were putting food on their family, and uh, thanks to you, Bob, a fellow flyer, cardboard flyer, a fellow flyer. flyer. Yeah, when I say I started in the newspaper business, I really right started at the. Roots. I started where they made the paper, mm-hmm. only it was cardboard. <laughs> it was cardboard. Who was it? Waldorf and who? Horner was, Waldorf. Horner Waldorf. Okay. Horner Horner Waldorf. How long did you last in, on the job there? Uh, as long as I was supposed to. Oh, I thought that was the one where they asked you. Isn't that where you got your sh- shirt caught in the? No, that was when I made faucets. That's what I was thinking. That was of. at Union Brass and Metal. Yeah, he got around. He got my whole hand was starting to look like a faucet because the <laughs> the drill press was coming down and my hand was stuck. My my sleeve was stuck. Right. And so the drill press was about to turn my hand. Into a brass faucet. Well, why didn't you lift the drill back up? I probably didn't know or how. Turn it off. Yeah, I said I was screaming for help, and that's when Shorty looked at me, made another faucet, looked at me, made another faucet, <laughs> zipped over, ripped the plug out, got back in time to not miss a beat, made another faucet. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, we got it. He was uh, timing it. Yeah, he, he was, was timing it because those guys were getting paid, but well, we were all getting paid by piecework. It's like crossing a busy freeway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, uh, we got this new sushi kid. Where should we put him? Ah. Put him on the drill press. Put him on the drill press. Have him make faucets. Right. Make sure he's wearing loose clothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man of the people, Suge. God, that was harrowing. Just harrowing. And uh, it was nice to hear from Bob the Flyer. We flew cardboard. Oh, yeah. You know what that means? What Great that mean? big hot sheets of fly bo- uh, cardboard. Oof. What did it Oof. smell like Oof. in the... Uh... Like, like, uh, like you'd think. Okay. And, and here comes the hot sheet of cardboard, and behind you is a pallet. And what you'd do is you'd grab the the big sheet of po- uh, pl- uh, cardboard and let air get underneath it to help you lift it, and then just fly it behind you and put it on the pallet. And here came another one. Here came that another sounds one. rewarding. It was yeah. uh, it wasn't easy, but you hey, know uh, what? Yeah, I mastered it. Uh, update on our little um, oh yeah thing. Our poll question. Our poll. Uh, Pharisees, 11.9%. Regressives, 25.7%. Turds, 27.7%. And Delusionists, 347 Oh, Delusionists. Yep, Lead. winning. <clears throat> Spelled I, correctly. I hope so. I, I don't know, though. I think there might be some chicane. Because this is the second take, Maybe those other votes were Pharisees were just kicking butt. I went on. I voted for Pharisee. I, well, I, have th- I actually have three Twitter accounts, so uh, oh. that didn't help turds, though. Yeah. We're still in second. I can save this, and I can <laughs> save that. But you know what we didn't get to? Can we get to it next Fox. week? Fox. Uh, <laughs> Southwest Light Rail. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get to Fox. Yeah, we didn't get to that. Let's let's put that on the back burner right now. We can be mad. <laughs> none of we those, can be mad at them next week. people on Fox have balls. None okay. of them. Okay. Copy. Because they all thought that the uh, claims of rigged elections were false, but then they would go on the air and pretend like they were campaigning for Trump. You guys have no guts. Anyway. So we are going to get to it. I they love, have no guts. I love the use of the word impediment when it comes to the Southwest Light Rail yeah. uh, transit line. What else impediment. Are you find? They, well, in other words, they found a big hunk of concrete they didn't it, know was there. Whoops. Right. And then we didn't get to uh, Minneapolis is going to study sidewalk clearing. They're going to have a plan to have a plan. What's to study? I wonder. Uh on Thursday, a city council committee unanimously approved a plan for the city to study the question as well as other ways to improve conditions for the sidewalk using public. This is the first step of many in advancing a plan for the city to assume this responsibility, said council member Robin Wansley. She's one of the Marxists who sponsored the idea with council member Asha Chugati, Asha Chugati. She's another Marxist. Despite the broad support for, this, support for this study and the idea that sidewalks haven't been in great shape, there isn't widespread agreement on the council that a city takeover makes sense. Uh, Andrew 
uh, what's his name? Andrew Johnson's a council member, and he said, I'm concerned not just about the cost, but an operational challenge that I'm not sure the city is up for. Oh, the hell with them. Let it just go. What, what do I care? I, I, well, this should be a... Uh this should be a little bit of a day brightener. This is a gentleman by the name of Bill Borghoff. He is a senior meteorologist at NWS Twin Cities. Oh. This is a large-scale model for next week. Snowstorm? I have never seen this before. So far out. 90% chance of 8 inches and a 10% chance of 28 inches of snow spanning across the state of Minnesota. Bottom line... Pay attention next week. Things can still change, but wow, what, what a signal. Uh, what what day would that be? That'd be, uh, I believe, um, <clears throat> late Tuesday, early Wednesday mm. into uh, into Friday, Joe. Well, you might not be seeing it. Good luck that. with that flight home yeah. there, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, great. Well, you know what? There's worse places to be stranded. No, but I, I, I have, I, I'm going to be traveling with a very nervous flyer, and... Uh, if there's a blizzard, uh, she'll be coming around the mountain. Uh huh. <laughs> well, good luck to you. And I also wanted to get to this. I won't. I'll just mention you can go GLers and find it for yourself. Uh, it's on the front page of today's Wall Street Journal. Uh, Ford, which was of course invented the assembly line, had to shut their uh, F-150 electric truck line down because of battery fires. <laughs> and uh, okay then. I mean, you're you're getting quotes here from the the chairman of Ford. This is a this is a big deal. Uh, we have deeply entrenched issues in our industrial system that have proven tough to root out, and this is uh, Mr. Farley, Jim Farley, who is the head of Ford, and he said this during the company's fourth quarter earnings call. Yes. Uh, Mr. Farley has pointed to the irony that Ford, which invented the moving assembly line and built an industrial system that was the marvel of the world, is being tripped up by some basic nuts and bolts of the car business. This is what we should be known for. It's our legacy, Farley said. On Wednesday, Ford said a battery fire in an F-150 Lightning was the reason it halted production at the Detroit area factory that makes the electric pickup truck. Ford said the plant will be down at least through the end of next week as it investigates the cause and said it doesn't think trucks shipped to customers are affected by the problem. Previous Ford CEOs also have cited deep-rooted problems in Ford's industrial system, which have lingered after different company overhauls through the years. And I won't read you the whole piece, but I read it. It was very interesting. Imagine a future <laughs> yeah, with no. freight trucks oh, that deliver bread up. and milk. An interesting sidebar to this story, Wall Street Journal is the only news outlet that I can find on the internet that is covering this. The only one. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing it in Detroit papers, Chicago papers, anywhere else. Uh, there's many stories about them shutting down last year due to uh, chip shortages. You know what else the manufacturer of EVs will do to the likes of Ford? Mm. It will cost thousands of employees their jobs. It's going to be a result of it. Wait you, a minute. Don't need, you don't need as many employees. I mean, you're not exactly building an engine. Well, true. You're lowering a body onto a battery tray. Imagine. And so there's a lot of people that are going to be, and I'm being very serious, they're going to have trouble putting food on their family mm -hmm. so we can save the earth, which doesn't need saving and won't be saved by electric vehicles. Only. Well. Only? Because they come to us all the way. I bet you might recognize some of these. <laughs> I know. I heard them last year. <laughs> Only because they come to us all the way from uh, Marloth Park in Mpumalanga, South Africa, from the traveling Lymans uh, at WorldwideWaftage.com. It was on this day in 1815. Feb 17. The Treaty of Ghent went into effect, formerly, formally ending the War of 1812. The treaty dictated that the British must vacate posts on the U.S. soil, including those in present-day Minnesota. And I believe when he arrived on the scene, they would, they would shout, bring out the Ghent. No, that was Gimp. Whoa. Oh. On this day in 1881, 
You know what, moron? That ain't funny. <laughs> On this day in 1881, Norman County was established. Although the name is believed to honor influential, influential settler colonist Norman Kitson, it is now understood that Norwegian immigrants selected the name in remembrance of their homeland. Huh. On this day in 1921, 217, Sister Carmela Hange, principal of Cathedral School in St. Paul and a member of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet, All right. founded the School Safety Patrol in Minnesota, which became an international model for parochial and public institutions. At first, a school police program for boys who served as guards helping fellow elementary school students cross busy streets, Sister Carmela's enterprise inspired the organization of numerous programs that now include girl guards and bus patrols. I think that... See, there used to be a cathedral grade school. Who did the orange flag, I wonder? That's Sister Carmela. Okay. On this day in 1972... What do you got, Frasca? The U.S. Department of Justice filed a pollution suit against Reserve Mining Company, which operated a taconite plant on Lake Superior and dumped tailings contaminated contaminated with asbestos-like fibers into the lake. That's a bad deal. Lasting five years, the proceedings would become the nation's longest and most expensive environmental legal battle to that date. Huh. And G. Ellers, see you later. <laughs> Huge recommendation for you to go to the Garage Logic Twitter page and vote. Yes. But also scroll down a little bit. Uh, somehow they found a gem from my South Dakota trip from way back when, when we walked into the old-time photo store. Gabe is about uh, one and a half years old, and uh, it's it? pretty charming. I don't, uh, Ross must have found it. It was on the uh, Garage Logic YouTube video page. So subscribe to that, and you might see something like that. Uh, if we do, you might want to visit when we had to do the old dump station with Matthew. That was a good one, too. Uh, uh, we're out uh, for a few days next week. There yeah. will be best ofs available, though. Yep, we there will, will provide some content, available. as we say. If you want to sign up with the Garage Logic Town Council, you should go to garagelogic.com. Also, the online store, PodMN, for the other podcasts that you want to check out. And just basically, uh, have a great weekend. You know, this is the time and place. Happy President's Day. Do we, do we chow that?